Hi, Floss Tube friends. It's Lisa Smith, the Kindred Stitcher. Uh, well, this is my third take. First time I thought I was recording and I wasn't. And the second time I recorded about 10 seconds worth of material and realized when I looked at myself that I didn't have any lips. And so I thought, well, cry many. I don't have to go put some lipstick on because the poor girl on the screen, she didn't have any lips. So I went and got some lipstick on just for you. Uh, today is Thursday, May 20, I think it's the 25th. I'm on vacation this week, and I don't know if you're a list maker, but I am. I just busted out a huge list of things I wanted to do, and then I did the easy stuff first, right, so you could scratch it off, and then when it got really messy, I wrote a second list. So now I'm down to the things that I really don't want to do. So I thought, well, I'll do a floss tube video instead. Um, so I've been busy, though, doing some finishing work, so I'll show you some of the finishes I've had lately. Um, talk a little bit about some stash. I'm going to show you a couple of my UFOs that are shameful. Like, I don't know why they're not done. They've been hanging out in a box forever. And then, what else? Maybe some plans. A few other things. So, vacation. Let's see. One day, I was in the yard for six hours straight. And I could barely move the next day. But I'm telling you, my, my yard was a mess. It was a disaster. We had a little storm come through a couple weeks ago. And, um, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, we get storms. But we've had a lot of rain this year. So this storm is kind of like a Midwest storm, except we have trees here. We have a lot of trees. So we lost some trees in our property. Our neighbors lost trees. It was kind of a mess all over the area. So we did a lot of sweeping and pressure washing, cleaning up. I worked on that, uh, I worked on some finishing, went out with some friends, played trivia night last night, and I'm getting ready for, uh, we go on an annual dirt bike trip over Memorial Weekend, so I gotta get the food ready for that and all the camping supplies, and we're, we're tent campers, so um, we can't just throw in the RV, we gotta get ready to go in a trailer. Anyway, let's see. So, how about I start with showing you some stash. I wanted to say I didn't have any stash, but that would be a lie. Um, the first things I picked up were, do -do -do, yeah, the early American stuff. I was going to get that, and then I saw Vanna's, um, like, framed border that she did, that she's giving out. And I'm telling you, once I saw that, I was in hook, line, and sinker. So, I have those on auto ship. I got this. This is so cute. I think y'all probably seen this, right? This is um, Country Cottage, a bee sampler. Yep. And it's just, I think it's the spring like feel of this and the nice weather that we're having now that made me think, oh yeah. I got that off a of stash unload for not much. And this one, same kind of thing. It looks like summer. Look at the little mermaid on the whale. Although I hate that tree and I'm going to redo this. I'll probably put a little, like, another little building or something there. But that, that would go really quickly. Plum Street samplers. Um, this one. How fun is that? Mrs. Claus in her sexy attire. Huh. And a cute, a couple of these. And this, these are French words. I don't know how to say Or maybe Italian. If y'all know how to say it, you can coach me on how I should say that. Cute though, huh? Halloween. Makes me want to stitch Halloween or Christmas. And I love, like, on this one, look at that little cottage. Isn't that adorable? This is Winter in Quilt by C-U-O-R-E-E-B-A-T-T-I-C-U-O-R-E. -E -E. I don't know. Another thing I got off the stash on load, let's see. Hold on. A couple of things. Oops. This one. I have one uh, finished stitch that's roses from the 90s. It's probably the same person that does them. But uh, I love the colors in that one. And then this this one, John 316 sampler. That one would go really fast. I feel like that would be one that would be easy to stitch like in the car. And then heartstring samplery. I don't know. She's pretty close to where I live. She just lives in, down, down the road in Oregon, um, in Gresham. But I, oh my gosh. I love all this. I think she's got three of these out now. 
I got them. You know I bought them. And I got these because those are on auto ship. I've got the I've got the um, fabric for that. I bought I think like an eighth or no, it must have been a quarter. No, not a half, probably a quarter. Oh, maybe it's a half. I don't know. But the fabric is gorgeous. And then this one I got off the stash and load. Peace on Earth sampler. And I think I'm in the mood for just to get some Christmas stuff going. I don't know if it's Christmas in July or what it is. <clears throat> oh, and then this one I got too. Oh, here's another Christmas one. Otane and Bomb. I got that on clearance in Needle Workshop in Indianapolis. Well, it's actually Zinesville. It's called Persnickety Stitches. Cute little shop. So if you get up there, drop in and say hi and um, support your local Needle Workshop. All right. So that, that's enough, don't you think? I thought I was doing better this month, and then I looked at this, I was like, uh, I need to, I don't know, put myself on a stash diet. And then let's see. So, here's some finishes. You guys, when I get finishes done and fully finished objects, I'm like, what took me so long? What took me so long? So, let me show you, let's start with this one. This is a kit by Teresa Maloon. It's a little um, pin cushion, right? So it came as a kit, and it's got fat, cute fabric. And um, so this is a variegated one, um, limited edition thread that came with the kit. I think it's a gentle art, and I think it's called tamale. And I've never done uh, a drum this way. So she, this was smart. She had you sew the top and the bottom to the side and then fill it and completely stitch it. And then you slice the bottom, like a hole in the bottom and you fill it from there and then just cover it with a little, I put a heart. <laughs> this isn't very um, circular. I think I need some, um, I need to do some work on my stitching, but it doesn't matter, that's on the bottom. You're just gonna look at the top anyway. Super cute, huh? Uh, and I filled it with some polyfill um, and I also use some walnut shell chips from the pet food, the pet area at, must have been the reptile area at Petco. I think that's where you get it. I have a big bag of it. And then, hold on just a second, let me get a pattern. Hold, please. Okay. You know when you put things away in a safe spot and you're like, ah. Oh, going to use that for the video. All right. So this is the second fully finished object I have is from Blackbird Designs, My Dear Hearts. And this came out at market this year. There's a couple of designs. There's this one, the bigger sampler, which is really pretty. And on the back, you'll see there is the bigger sampler. And then there's this heart pin cushion. Well, that's what I did. And so I was searching through my stash, my fabric stash, and found fabric that I liked. Um, it was Garnet by Dye Stitch Love, and she's not stitching anymore, or she's not um, dyeing anymore. But you guys, there was one area of the fabric that I really liked, and this isn't a big, I mean, it's a bigger pincushion, but it didn't take up much of the thread, much of the fabric. So this is what happened, and I don't care. I picked the area of the dyed fabric that I like the most, and I stitched on that. And this is what it looks like. It is so adorable. I use that word all the time. It's very cute. Um, this was, I think this was supposed to be Sandcastle, this kind of main, warm, kind of a off cream color. And I used um, Brandy, General Hearts Brandy. And then, um, let me see. I'll use my pointer here. I introduced a pink, a Victorian pink. That's also General, uh, General Arts. And then this is Fawn, this kind of little light color. That was called for and that's what I used. So I did switch it up a little bit, but I like it, about, you know, that's, to me, that's what makes it unique. Um, and then, so what's really cool about the finishing on here is she had these bicone beads that she stuck a pin in, right? So she just stuck a pin through the bead and put it into the stitched um, item. 
Well, I have four sons and a husband, and it would just take one of them to pick it up, and all of a sudden they'd be like, I don't know what happened. All the beads fell out of it, and all the pins are on the ground. So I knew that that wasn't going to be a long-term solution in my house. So I took bicone beads, and I got them at a, a bead store, and then I just took little teeny silver beads, because I didn't like the way that looked. Um, and I just strung it through. So the, I used invisible thread, came out, strung a little bead on top, went back through the bicone, and then just went and worked my way around the fabric and did it that way. Um, and then the back is Sweeney Red by uh, Velvet by Dames of the Needle. And this, this fabric is amazing. It's great finishing material. It's got very um, consistent and really pretty color on the back. Uh, on the velvet and I recommend it. It's great quality, um, great quality finishing material. So there's that and I loved it. I loved it. Here's my other, my last one. So this is Blackbird Designs Patchwork Pink Keep. And I borrowed the pattern because it hasn't been released other than as a kit for a club. And I borrowed the pattern from a friend. I changed the colors. So the colors I have, I used are, hold please. Sorry about that. Again, I put stuff away. I don't know why I do that. Um, I used Country, Gentle Arts Country Red, Flax, Chamomile, Burlap, and a limited edition called Car Carmel, C-A-R-M-E-L. And then I used a couple of Cosmos threads. I also have Cosmos threads that I use for um, Crap Up the Hill patterns. Uh, they're two green colors, 8024 and 5015. And I changed it a little bit. So the pattern is pretty much the same up here, um, except here I wrote Christmas Pin Keep instead of, I think it was like your name or something like that, but Christmas Pin Keep in there. Over here, I added a heart where something else was supposed to go there. I put my initials and the date here. So th that's basically the changes that I made besides the colors. Then I use this kind of wonky ribbon from the Shepherd's Bush. This is an over dyed ribbon that I bought off of Etsy, but the, the finishing process is based on one of their tutorials on YouTube that's called wonky, wonky thread or something like that. And basically you just take a little gather of thread and put a neat, uh, put a pin or a, um, a bead here. So you go down with your bead, push your ribbon up a little bit and come back up and put another bead on. Super easy. Again, I use the Sweeney Red on the back. Um, but I love it, right? I, don't, I just like got Christmas on my brain. I don't know. But that's my second, uh, my third fully finished object. And I have another finish that I'm not, I won't surprise you with it. But it, it is going to be the Jeanette Douglas Designs Vintage Birds. I was struggling because I honestly, who can afford to have everything framed? Nor do we have wall space for everything. So I have a really awesome solution that came to me when I was in uh, Michael's. And I'll share it on my next video. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Okay. So that's the finishes. You saw my stash. You saw my finishes. Um, so my whips, my whips are, okay, I was working on, remember I was working on Sabrina for my niece as a bride, um, for her wedding. I don't know what, I, I'm getting some done, but I'm just not, like, this hasn't taken off, um, as much as I'd like to. There's a little bit over here. Um, it's very pretty. Uh, and I'd stitch the flowers. I was like, oh, I, I think what I realized is I like a lot of color. I like to stitch with color. So if there's not a lot of color, sometimes I have a hard time staying on task. And so I, if I go between projects, like I did the finishing work, then back to Sabrina. Um, I have a couple of others that I have kitted up. I have, um, I think I should do this last time. I got Jenny Bean. I think I'm going to take this one camping. I've got all the colors and fingers crossed just a white stash some material from stash and load I think it's just a regular it might be a 32 count it's a linen it's not an even weave 
So I got that one, and I also have um, on loan from the lending library. I have Easter Parade because everybody's stitching that right now. And I did substitute a bunch of the threads. Or actually, this is what happened. I was going to kit it up, and I thought, oh, there's a lot of th threads I don't have until I looked at what I had, and I had quite a few of them. So this is the, um, I have hand dyed by Stephanie Vanilla Latte is the material. So it's kind of, it's just a cream, very basic. And then um, the colors are super Eastery with the pinks, you know, there's pinks and, and purples and kind of lights. And this one is not called for. I'm just going to put that in because I liked it. I'll stitch it somewhere in there. So that one I'll do probably, I don't think I'll take that one camping with me. Uh, I don't have it decided. So that's what's going on with um, my whips. I've just been finishing things. I need to work some more on Sabrina. Anyway, all right. So, I'll take you back to the Wayback Machine. Um, I, I, like everybody else, we have, we have things that hang around for a long time. And I didn't realize how much time had passed and how much, how many unfinished projects I have that had become UFOs. And there's a reason for it. I just maybe got bored with it or I got busy in my life and I was raising kids and didn't have a lot of time for stitching. But this one made me think, I need to get back on this. Okay, so this is Teresa Wentler's, Wentzler's Cottage, right? This is the most labor-intensive backstitching project I have ever done. And I have a good part of it done. All the way to the bottom. And um, so you see... <laughs> let me show you. This is the last time I worked on it. 1994, the last time I worked. I'm not even gonna take that out. I'm just gonna stitch it and pretend like I got it done in 1994. Um, it's, and it's kind of dirty, I'm gonna have to wash it. Huh. But I, it's really probably, I could get it done, I imagine, in about a month. Maybe a month or two. Um, it's very pretty. Like the fabric is a, it's an Ada. I don't usually stitch on Ada anymore, but it looks like it's about an 18 count Ada, maybe 16 count. And um, it's cute. Like I would frame it and hang it in my house if I could just get it done. So I thought, well, that's, that's like got to be the oldest one in my stash. No, <laughs> unfortunately not. So this Paula Vaughn, this is my first stitch into, into, um, into, I don't know if this, or pattern behind it into even weave. This is, yeah, this is an even weave. Any kind of a linen or even weave. Right? And I, I'm not even sure what I have left to do on this. I'd have to pull the pattern out. Probably something over here. Not a whole lot is left. And you look at, it's kind of amazing though when I look at it, I think, oh, my tension is sure a lot better than it used to be. And this definitely needs a bath. It needs to be washed. But I think I might just finish that one too. Maybe this is the maybe, maybe I just need to get my out of the out of the corner shameful items done. So there's that one, and this is the one that cracks me up. Okay, so this is I got went through a period where I really like the lavender and lace. So this this is huge. This has got to be probably a half yard or more of fabric, and I I gave it plenty of border. Look at that border, jeez. So she's, she's probably about half done. And that was the day I added blending filament to the wings. So the wings are really sparkly. And the stitching's not bad. But this thread in here on the dress is marlet. Which is kind of like the DMC satin stuff. It's a nightmare. They don't make it anymore. Is what I understand. But she is super sparkly. Like if I could show you how sparkly she is. You might be able to see it. There you go. You might be able to see some of the sparklies in it. That was when Krennic was called Bulger, and it's all blending filament. And you guys, <laughs> the back of my fabric is so hairy. Like I used to leave trailing threads that were, I don't know, almost a half an inch long. So I'm gonna have to go back and give her a shave. It's like she needs to come out of winter hibernation, shave her legs or something. 
But I was, I did realize I have, so I have three skeins of Marla. I, I was thinking ahead, I did buy these. And I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I might work on her. We'll see. I have some more in the Wayback Machine. But uh, if you've got, if you've got a UFO that you're struggling to re-engage with and you have some tips, share it with me. Put it in the comments because I don't, I don't really want to have all these extra projects that are not done, but all the cute stuff coming out and all the stash that I bought, I'm never going to get to those. So if you have some tips, share them with me. Thank you. Uh, let's see, what else? I think, oh, so here, sometimes we get hung up on finishing things that are like to me, maybe a little intimidating. So when I started doing project bags, I had never put a zipper in anything. And I just did it, right? So I just, because the risk was small, I was following a tutorial, that was good. So I have stitched one, two, three, four, five, seven of these. Seven, you guys. This is for my niece, who is going to be 10 this year. And this is the most recent one I've done. So my kids saw me stitch these for them and they're not done. And you know why? Because I don't have a piping foot for my sewing machine and I want to put piping around the edge. And I don't want to screw these up. So I, I just need to get over that. I just need to, if you all know of a tutorial on how to add piping to a project, please help me with that. I didn't see, if there's something on YouTube, I'm a visual person. I really like tutorials better. Um, here's my second son, Dylan, and he has Santa's workshop. And my boys were huge into heavy equipment because my husband works in the heavy equipment field. So I added this. That right there for him. A little excavator. He's now, he's gonna be 21 this year. Yeah, sad. This one is from my husband. I need to add his, this is the very first one I did, and I did it on Ada, small Ada. I think they recommend to do these on, um, on either in, even Weaver Linen, and I need to rip that out and put his name in there. And this is for my fourth son, Cooper. These were, uh, these were so much fun to stitch, too. I loved them. And this one is for my oldest son, Randy. Super cute, huh? Boys room, all those little things. The little barn is so cute, the chicken. And my son, Curtis, my third son. He's really into music, he still is. And I think I've got some little, like one of these calls for maybe little bells. I think I've got some little bells somewhere, like sleigh bells that you add to it. Yeah. And then mine is, of course, of course it's the craft room, right? you got to have the craft room. And there's a couple of them that have this petite stitch right there, the one over one. And the quilt and all the cross stitching with the scroll frame and the stand. I love them. Every time I get them out, I'm like, oh, why don't I have these finished? So I'm looking for your help, my friends. If you know of a finishing video on using a piping foot, please share it with me. Okay, so let me see what else I got here. Doo -doo -doo. I think that's probably it. Oh, one more thing. I take painting class. I thought this was kind of fun. I know there's a lot of you who do knitting or crocheting or other hobbies. And I have painted off and on in my life. I start. I did some uh, art class in high school that really got my brain going. And I did oil painting then, um, a little bit, not much for acrylics, a little bit of watercolor. And then as I had um, my children, I found a um, like a toll painting class that I went to for probably 10 years and I had a break for probably almost 10 years. Then I found another teacher in the area that I live in now 
Um, it's hit and miss because I've been really busy with work and with traveling. I couldn't go for a long time. But this is a recent one I thought I'd share with you. It's kind of fun. It's a patriotic old glory. And this is, it's wood and you, dec you like decoupage some vellum paper on the bottom, then base coat it, then transfer your design on and paint your design, crackle it, so you see all of the aging on it, right? And then stain over that so it gives it this really aged look. So what's really neat is you can kind of see the paper underneath it and then you see your design and then, um, and it's sort of edged and painted here to make it look like it's ripped, but it's, it's not ripped, obviously. I thought this is kind of fun. And um, I love seeing everybody else's hobbies that you have outside of stitching. So if you do something cool and unique, share it. I mean, I think we all want to see the talents you all have and um, live vicariously through other people. So, hey, that's the end of my video. Have a safe and happy um, holiday weekend. Once I get my other finish done um, with Vintage Birds, maybe I'll post another video. But um, take care, y'all. We'll see you next time.